There's a story told about golf legend Arnold Palmer and a Baptist minister. This Baptist minister was having a golfing holiday and on his first day out on the course at the golfing resort he learned that Arnold Palmer used to play the course regularly. The toughest hole was the 17th and as the pastor approached the tee his caddy said when Arnold Palmer plays this hole he uses the number three iron and says a little prayer. I'll give it a try said the pastor. Well the ball got plugged in a bunker. Oh well he said I guess the good Lord didn't hear me. He probably heard you, said the caddy, but when Mr Palmer says his prayer, he keeps his head down. There's another story. A young girl wrote a letter to a missionary. It was a prayer letter and she was trying to lend her support to the missionary. Evidently she'd been told not to request a reply because the missionaries were very busy. When the missionary received the letter, there was a big smile on their face. The letter said, Dear Mr. Missionary, we're praying for you, but we're not expecting an answer. I think that little girl summarised the prayer lives of many Christians today. Dear God, I'm praying to you, but I doubt you will answer. Jesus taught a parable to show us that we should always pray and never give up. It's in Luke 18. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or I'll care about men, Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that eventually she won't wear me out with her coming. When Jesus told that story, I wonder whether he had the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth in mind in Luke chapter 1. He was a man, Zechariah, who was married to a wonderful woman called Elizabeth, he was a priest by profession. She was faithful in every way. And he served in the Jerusalem temple. The couple sadly were childless. And now in old age, in the culture of the day, this was considered equivalent to not having God's blessing upon your life. One day as Zechariah was burning incense inside the temple, as a large crowd stood praying outside, an angel of the Lord appeared and stood just to the right of the altar where Zechariah was burning the incense. Zechariah was overwhelmed with fear, but the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah, for God has heard your prayer, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. Elizabeth and Zechariah doubted the angel's message. They couldn't believe they were going to have a child because they were both very old. Zechariah asked for a sign. He was saying in effect, God, I can't trust you. I really do need some proof that it's you talking to me. The angel said that because he doubted the sign or judgment would be that he wouldn't be able to speak until the child was born. And when he emerged from the temple, the people realized he couldn't speak and concluded that he must have seen a vision. Zechariah was to learn that although he and Elizabeth were getting on in years, God is not limited by our limitations. So what are the lessons for you and me? Well, number one, we need to be willing to let God answer in his own time, according to his schedule and his timetable. The angel said, God sent me here. I am Gabriel, the archangel, and you're going to have your prayer answered. And so Zechariah the skeptic said, How can I be sure of this? Why didn't he believe it? Because he'd stopped praying that prayer for a number of years before. God heard his prayer and sent the answer, even though years earlier Zechariah and Elizabeth had given up on praying for a child. They were resigned 
that it wasn't going to happen. Many years ago, Bren and I were young in ministry and we booked our annual family holiday on the Isle of Wight. We'd just got enough money to get onto the island and to pay for the accommodation. However, a few weeks before we were due to go, we had an unexpected problem with the car. The bill had to be paid, but this left a dilemma. If we paid the garage, how were we going to pay the fortnight's rent for the holiday flat? That money had to be paid as we arrived, or we wouldn't get the key. The garage won the argument. Going away on our holidays as a family in the summer was something we always looked forward to. It was a chance to escape and be on our own, but now this particular year, going away with three lads under six, with bills to pay and no spare money, seemed foolhardily. Praying for the Lord to make it possible for us to pay for that flat was now a priority. The weeks went by. The week before we were due to go, we still hadn't got the answer to our prayer, and by Thursday we were certainly at the nail-biting stage. We were travelling on Saturday. Somewhere deep inside we had this conviction that our prayer would be answered, and so we carried on packing and getting something, everything ready. We were very nervous. It is Friday evening, and the doorbell rings. Standing at the door was a couple who lived in one of the villages close by. A lovely, prayerful couple. And as we shared a cup of tea with them, they began to tell us the story of how during their devotions earlier in the week, God had laid us on their hearts. They didn't know why, but they began to pray for us. And as they did, God spoke and told them to put a sum of money in an envelope and bring it to us. God said to them, they have need of this. They were the sort of couple that didn't ask questions of the Lord, and so they ended up in our front room, and a large envelope was passed across to us. Inside was a sum of money that was exactly the cost of the balance on the flat. It was in cash, because a cheque wouldn't have cleared in time, they said. You can imagine how we reacted. Just as Zechariah was spoken to by the angel, don't be afraid, your prayer has been heard. Here were we just overwhelmed by God's and their love for us. Tears of joy flowed and there were even a few hugs. They were most definitely angels. All they did was obey God. They had no idea until we told them just how much a blessing they were. And that holiday will always be remembered as God's holiday. An added bonus was that the flat was over the local Pentecostal church. Why does God delay our answers to prayer? Usually it's because he wants to prepare our character first. God doesn't put us into a situation to fail. He wants to grow our character. So let me give you some biblical examples. God called Moses at the burning bush to lead the people out of Egypt because he was working out a purpose in Moses, even though Moses was an exile in the desert. Moses was right on God's schedule, so that God could let Moses know what his plans were. The children of Israel had been crying out for freedom from the tyranny of Egypt for many years, and now the time had come for God to give his answer. God gave a special word to Abraham. Abraham, you're going to have a son, a son of the promise. But Abraham took things into his control, and he didn't wait on God. He slept with Sarah's maid Hagar, and she bore him a son called Ishmael. He caused marital problems, and was caught between two jealous women. He was expelled from the family, and the nations and the people groups of the world have been feuding ever since. Why didn't Abraham receive his natural-born son for 25 years? His character wasn't equal to what God wanted to do. God's timing, you see, is perfect, and Abraham had to learn that. Soon God would be testing Abraham and providing a ram in a bush so that Abraham didn't have to sacrifice his son Isaac. The tension is this, you see. We think we're ready to receive the answer to our prayers, and on the other hand, God is waiting for us to mature enough 
so that we can handle the assignment he wants to entrust us with. Then, after we've learned the right attitude, God will move us towards his promises. The fact of the matter is this. We may think God is late, but he's never late. His delays are not his denials. Not yet does not mean no. How do we pray when God seems silent, when answers to prayer are delayed? We keep on praying until one of three things happens. We get the answer. We get the assurance that we're going to get it. Therefore, I tell you, says Jesus in Mark 11, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. And thirdly, we keep praying until God reveals to us that it's not his will. Yes, sometimes we do pray prayers that are not God's will, and that's why we don't get the answer. But we do get an assurance that it's right for that to happen. Being willing to let God answer in his own way is a big challenge for all of us. Not only whenever he thinks best, but however he thinks best. That's the way forward. Letting him answer in his own way. Because God's ways are always better and usually bigger when he answers. We may have a certain way we think our lives should go, but God may want to change that. His ways are higher than our ways. Isaiah 55 says this, My thoughts are completely different from yours, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. That's the reason God often delays the answer so that he can answer in a way far bigger than we originally thought. What would have happened in this story if God had answered Elizabeth and Zachariah's request for a baby immediately? Yes, they would have had a lovely little Jewish boy whom they would have loved and enjoyed, but he wouldn't have been the son that God wanted them to have. God delayed the request for years because he wanted to give them John the Baptist, who would be the herald, the announcer, pointing the way towards Jesus. Our problem is twofold. We ask too little and we want it too quick. If we ask for small things, that's what we will get. We don't dream big enough. We don't pray big enough. We don't think big enough. We aim too low. God wants to change our character, our lifestyles, our prayer life, our faith, in what he desires to do. He wants to do so much more than we can ask or think. We need to be willing to let God answer in his own power and in his own way. We don't ask for something in prayer and then go and try to work out the request on our own. We must let God answer. And then... We can call it a miracle. There's an important truth in this story about Zechariah and Elizabeth. The fact is this. God often waits until the situation is humanly impossible before he answers. When did God give, give Zechariah and Elizabeth a baby? After they were beyond childbearing years. They said, we're too old. Then God answered. Why? Because when God answers the impossible, he gets all the credit. When we pray and the request is not right, God says no. When we pray and we're not right, God says grow. When we pray and the timing is not right, God says slow. When we pray and everything's in place, God says yes. Oh,